How did our solar system originate? NASA has launched a new mission to try and answer that question. Lucy lifted off from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The probe will spend the next 12 years studying asteroids near the planet Jupiter. The space rock is leftover debris from the formation of our solar system. It's hoped the close encounters will reveal clues about how we got here. One hour after takeoff, Lucy is set to unfold its solar panels. Each one has a diameter of more than seven meters. The enormous size of these panels gives Lucy the energy needed to penetrate deeper into our solar system than any other previous space probe. Lucy is headed to Jupiter and the so-called Trojan asteroids that circle it. These celestial bodies are locked into Jupiter's orbit around the Sun by the planet's intense gravity field. The Trojan asteroids are distributed in two separate, elongated regions situated ahead of and behind Jupiter. Images from the Hubble Space Telescope show that these asteroids might originate from different places in the solar system. They have different colors and reflect light differently. The asteroids appeared about four and a half billion years ago. They're thought to have originated in the early days of the solar system's formation. But the asteroids are still made up of their original matter, whereas the planets have continued to evolve over the years. The space probe Lucy is set to observe a total of seven asteroids. To achieve this, it must negotiate some complex flight maneuvers. First, it will gain momentum by circling the Earth twice, before it launches out into deep space. The journey will take until August 2027. Once in deep space, Lucy will be able to observe the first four asteroids during a flyby. Then it will set course for Earth, where it will once again gain momentum for a second journey to gather information on a different cluster of asteroids. The spacecraft is programmed to observe the surface of these different worlds, searching for ice and substances that may have led to forms of life. Scientists hope it can help them research the possible origins of matter. They're hoping this will shine new light on the early stages of our solar system. Interesting stuff, and let's keep talking about it with Keith Cowling. He's in Washington, D.C. He's an astrobiologist who used to work for NASA and is now the editor of NASA Watch, a blog about the American space program. Welcome, Mr. Cowling. So just how groundbreaking is the launch of Lucy? Well, normally when you have a mission like this to visit an asteroid, it's maybe an asteroid, or maybe two if you're lucky, and if everything works well, maybe a third. And this spacecraft is going to be seeing uh, seven, eight, nine. There are other asteroids you could see in addition to these, but this is like a, a whole bunch of them, and they're of all different types. And as was mentioned in your introductory piece, some of these asteroids may be in the same place they've been for billions and billions of years before planets formed, which was, as mentioned, something really exciting. You're getting to see the Lego blocks out of which planets formed. Why do you think we need to study these Trojan asteroids? Well, again, they are, they're potentially building blocks from which all of the planets we now have, Earth, uh, Venus, Mars, and so forth, were formed. And we know what we have today, and the mystery has always been, how did all this stuff come together uh, to form planets? And this is really a fundamental question of you know, planetology, is where do we come from? And of course, at the same time, many of the substances that form life, as we know it on Earth, are now being found on a variety of small bodies, comets, and asteroids around the solar system. And the question is, how did all those chemicals, carbon, water, oxygen, and so forth, how did they come to the Earth? And these bodies may represent freeze-frozen examples of what once bombarded the Earth with the chemicals that eventually became us. Uh, so the probe will spend the next 12 years studying these asteroids. When will we potentially get any answers regarding all of this that you're just talking about? Well, it's going to take several years to get to the first batch of these things. So, you know, go on with your business. Uh, yeah, there's not going to be any news <laughs> tomorrow. But... Uh, as this stuff starts to come in, it'll be it'll become something where if you were in fifth or sixth grade, 
uh, by the time you got out of high school, it would not be unusual for you to know about eight new worlds that uh, all we know right now is that they're orbiting ahead or behind a Jupiter in their little point of light. So we're, we're going to just expand even further the knowledge we have of the solar system with, within which we live. And also, as we're discovering planets around other stars, these asteroid types will be found there, too. So we're learning something about other star systems at the same time. Uh, very briefly, if you can, where is modern space exploration generally headed under President Biden? Will we really see the first woman on the moon by 2024? By 2024, I, I sincerely doubt that, and that's just a matter of scheduling and funding. I think the, the Trump folks had a, in Washington, we call it an aspirational goal. You know, put something on the wall and then aim toward it, and, uh, and the money and everything else didn't quite make it. The rockets are late, so um, uh, will it be sh within a few years of that? Absolutely. Now, that's NASA. It could be that Elon Musk decides that he can just, he's building a lander for NASA, but he could decide to use one of his other rockets and just go there himself. He could go there sooner. We'll see. Well, we keep talking to you as we approach that date. Keith Cowing, astrobiologist and formerly with NASA, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.